We think we know William Shakespeare, but the truth is he's really a mystery. There's evidence that a John Shakespeare lived here from around the middle of the 1550s. Paul Edmondson is head of research and knowledge at the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust in Stratford-upon-Avon. This is a room in which we believe William Shakespeare was born in 1564. What little is known about Shakespeare the man comes from public records. For example, that his father, John Shakespeare, was a prosperous glove maker and wool dealer. He served on the town council. He became mayor of Stratford, or bailiff as it was called, in 1568. Yeah, this is it. This is hugely exciting. But it's in New York City, far from Shakespeare's hometown, that two rare booksellers, George Koppelman and Dan Wexler, think that they've lucked into one of the great what-if stories ever. Watch it, Diggers. Well, that wasn't so terrible. No, not that. so bad. It's, uh, maybe that the contents of the case is a major Shakespeare discovery. Can I, am I allowed to touch oh, yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. Let, let's what if the marked-up old book they bought on eBay for $4,300 in 2008, a kind of dictionary published in 1580 called Barrett's Alviary, actually belonged to William Shakespeare? It kind of doesn't matter where you open it, really. No. Because it, it, draw, it, it, it draws, draws you in. in. They brought their find to the Morgan Library in New York City in the summer of 2014 to show to Paul Edmondson. I'm trying to puzzle out the purpose of, of this right. page. The proof, Koppelman and Wexler believe, is in the handwritten scribblings in the margins and how they seem suspiciously similar to wordings in Shakespeare's writings. Shuffled together by ignorance. Now, of yes. course, shuffled is one of the most famous, yeah. you know, it's Hamlet, right? Right. Shuffled off this mortal coil. The title, Alviary, means beehive. Barrett was a Cambridge University professor who sent out his students, calling them his diligent bees, to collect words and their uses. Does this feel as if it might be Shakespeare? I wouldn't rule that possibility out. If these are the annotations of, of Shakespeare that are before us, then of course it's truly astonishing, but objectively, there's a lot of work to be done on this book. It was published when Shakespeare was 16, until around the age of 13, he attended King Edward VI Grammar School in Stratford. More than 400 years later, the school is still in use. He would have learned Latin and Greek, uh, a little bit of rhetoric. Bennett Carr is headmaster. All the ingredients of what makes Shakespeare Shakespeare Absolutely. came from, from this very room. In spite of all the images of Shakespeare around, especially in Stratford, what we think he looked like is largely based on this likeness in the first folio, the first compilation of Shakespeare's plays, published in 1623, seven years after his death. And it really is the truest portrait we know or that survives of him. Heather Wolf is curator of manuscripts at the Folger Shakespeare Library in Washington, D.C. When you talk about Dan and George's Barrett's, if it wasn't annotated by Shakespeare, who else would have done all those annotations? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are literally, literally thousands of candidates. Complicating our mystery is the fact that the only verified samples of Shakespeare's handwriting are signatures, which bear little resemblance to each other, let alone the jottings in the book. Does this look like this? The Folger Shakespeare Library is the largest collection of original documents connected to Shakespeare. Michael Whitmore, director of the Folger, says the job of scholars is to be dubious. Having an academic community go and look at this book as opposed to anybody else. You're looking for bad news. We've always said, bring, bring it on. Yeah. I've yet to read, and George has yet to read, an argument that takes our best examples seriously. Koppelman and Wexler, at their own expense, published a book detailing their evidence. They've digitized the alviary page by page and put it online so skeptics can study it. They can only trace its ownership back to the mid-1800s. There is no DNA, no CSI magic, to prove or disprove their claim. 
only databases that can tell whether these notes were commonplace phrases or unique to Shakespeare. Here, okay, so there it is. Wedlock. Wedlock. But there is this. You see, he's imitating this, this capital W. And we see it elsewhere. We can see it with the S, with shuffled. We see it three times with the S and five I think times five times with, with the w. w and with no other letter. W and S because it was William Shakespeare's book or just coincidence? Maybe it is, but I feel like there's, there's just too much there. We are going down into the vault, um, which is where we keep all of our books and manuscripts. Soon, the alviary will come through this door. The Folger Shakespeare Library has agreed to accept it on loan. Here, scholars will be able to see it, touch it, and compare it to other books from the period. This is an extreme example of a dictionary that came out in 1572. It's got writing everywhere. As for Koppelman and Wexler, whoever heard of booksellers thrilled not to sell a book. If someone offered us a price yeah. uh, right now and said, you have to find a way to cancel your loan agreement with the Folger and I'll write you such and such a check, that would not work for us. Yeah, we're confident in the work we've done and we'd like to see it validated. Validation, at best, will be a kind of consensus because 400 years after his death, Shakespeare hasn't left us much, except, of course, his words. <laughs>